Hey everyone, thanks so much again for joining me here on the Traveling in Ireland broadcast. I'm bringing you again on a virtual visit to Ireland, and my guest today is David Cleary from EPIC, the Irish Immigration Museum in Dublin. Now, EPIC is a massive, massive experiential museum. It's quickly become one of my very favorites, so I'm excited, David, to have you here today with me to kind of talk people through EPIC and give them a look inside. Yeah, I'm delighted to be joining you, Jody, and hello to everyone out there. Um, yeah, it, it, it's um, it's a really exciting opportunity to to bring the message of Epic to everyone um, that's watching. Um, we'll do it in a couple of minutes because, obviously, as you as you know, you've been there. It's uh, it's a, it's quite a large museum. Um, the average time that people would spend in the museum would be about ninety minutes. But I know people that have been in there six and seven hours. And even when I'm working there, I've been there for nearly two years. Whenever I go down to the museum every now and again, I still find stories that kind of uh, that, that are new to me so it's it's always a always a challenge to condense it down into a couple of minutes but we'll do our best today I what know I'm that do is... my first visit oh sorry sorry no go ahead go ahead I know that my first visit there I spent gosh two no two four hours and wow. at the end of it I kind of felt rushed Yes, because I, I was like, oh, the museum's closing. I've got to get out of here. Um, they're going to lock me in. But, <laughs> but uh, it was such an amazing experience because you you take this massive amount of information and you make it so interactive. I, I love the passport as you go through and yeah. and all the things to see and touch and almost be a part of. So. Yeah, it's, it's that, that's fun. what makes Epic a, a little bit different, you know, it's it's a different kind of a museum. Um, that's the feedback that we get from so many different people, you know, um, they, they love how interactive it is. And, and and like you say, you don't feel like you're there for as long as you are and you still want more, which I suppose is always a good sign. It's always nice to, to hear <laughs> that from people. Very much. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what people can expect at Epic and then Give us a, a bit of a virtual tour. Sure, of course, yeah. So um, I put together just a couple of uh, pictures and a couple of videos just so that people can experience um, maybe what it's going to be like for them to go through Epic. Um, obviously, uh, during this lockdown, we are um, we are closed as well. Um, so it's, it's another uh, great way of, of showing the digital side of the museum. And that's what Epic is. Epic is the world's first fully digital museum. Um, so it's kind of something very, very modern, very new, very, very different for people. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit of insight into that. The first thing to show you is the location of the museum and, and where it is housed. On the right there, you're, you will see the CHQ building. And the CHQ stands for Custom House Key. Now, this building is a former whiskey, wine and tobacco warehouse, and it's located right in the heart of Dublin, in Dublin's Docklands area. We're right on the River Liffey. On the left, then, you'll see our latest award, which is a World Travel Award that we won in 2019 as Europe's leading tourist attraction. So we're a relatively new museum. We've only been opened just coming up on four years now. Uh, and it's something that we're in incredibly proud of to beat off competition like the Colosseum in Rome, the Eiffel Tower, the Acropolis, Buckingham Palace. Mm -hmm. So it's a great testament to what we do at Epic and something we're very, very proud of. Um, in terms of location in Dublin, for those of you that um, maybe don't know the, the layout of Dublin, it's split into two in term, uh, by the River Liffey. Uh, so we have the north side of Dublin and we have the south side of Dublin. But Dublin is a great city because it's somewhere that you can really get around really easily. And we really encourage people if they're doing their hop on, hop off buses uh, or, or even if they're just using our tram system, but they can walk uh, uh, within the city centre really, really easily. You'll see the location of Epic there in the CHQ building on the north side of the River Liffey. And we are only a 10 minute walk to the main street in Dublin, the O'Connell Street. So that's a 10 minute walk to the GPO, one of our famous buildings, a 12 minute walk to Trinity College. So we're really, really central uh, in the city. You'll see there right on the quayside, we've got the Jeannie Johnson famine ship and also the famine sculptures. So there's a lot to do in this area uh, for, for people to come down. Um, as well as how, housing Epic in, in, within the CHQ building, there's lots of cafes and bars and restaurants. 
It's a beautiful old building. It's 200 years old. So it offers something a little bit different for people to come to come down and spend a morning or an afternoon. Uh, plenty for, for people to see and do. Um, the next couple of slides, I just want to give people a little bit of an insight as to what Epics lo looks like. We're located down in the vaults of the of the building, um, so it's quite an atmospheric uh, location. <laughs> and there are many different galleries that we bring people through. Each one of these galleries is designed a little bit differently. The museum is designed to be a self-guided museum, so it's fantastic for people just to go at their own pace. They don't have to follow a guide. They don't have to kind of time themselves and limit themselves to certain areas. They can just go at their own pace. And as you said, Jody, you were four hours and you still felt like you had more to see. <laughs> That's the that's the beauty of the museum, you can go at your own pace. Now the subject matter that what we talk about in, in Epic is very much talking about Irish people. We're an emigration museum, so what we do is through the use of technology and through the use of stories of Irish people, we bring people on a journey through Irish history. So we look at 1500 years of Ireland's history. We look at the reasons why Irish people would have left the island of Ireland, either being forced to leave or wanting to leave Ireland. And we look at where they went to all over the world. So it's very much um, Ireland's impact on the world and what people have done. At the heart of the museum, though, is people. Um, so Epic is... I always like to think of it like this. When you go to somewhere like the Guinness Storehouse, for example, one of Ireland's most popular attractions, you know what the story is about. It's going to be about the brand Guinness and about the drink. If you go to one of our many whiskey distilleries here in Dublin, it's about the process of whiskey distilling. If you go to a natural history museum, it's about history. Whereas Epic, sometimes it's a little harder for people to put their finger on and what it's actually about. How I like to remember it and how I tell people is Epic is a, is a museum of people. It's a museum of Ireland's greatest export, which is our people. It's a, it's a museum where we tell the story of why Irishness is celebrated around the world. And we've recently just had it a couple of weeks ago, um, St. Patrick's Day, March the 17th. Why is that celebrated all over the world? Why does the whole world turn green on St. Patrick's Day? And the reason is the influence of these Irish people that went all over the world. And that's what Epic tells the story of. It's people. It's discovering Ireland through the people, through um, the men and women that have left and the culture that they brought with them. Um, the next slide then is one of my favourites and one of my favourite characters. This is a, uh, an Irish uh, soccer player called Roy Keane. And the great thing about Epic is um, we all aspects of Irish culture and history. So if you have a, have a particular interest in politics, we have a politics gallery. If you have a particular interest in finding more out about the Irish famine, or finding out about our socio-economic culture in Ireland, or even if it's about sports stars, or, or writers, or poets, or actors, we cover all aspects in here. Um, I'm going to show, show you a, a very short video here that just gives you a bit of a sense of how people journey through the museum, how they interact with it. Because as I mentioned earlier, Epic is a fully um, designed as a, a, a fully self-guided museum. So it's really different for how people interact with the museum. They touch the, the museum. They feel part of the museum. Um, so it's really, really different in, in how people experience it. So I'll just play this short video um, so you can have a, a bit of a sense of that. Over the centuries, some 10 million people left the island of Ireland. Now you can travel in their footsteps and discover how this small island made such a big impression on the world. Experience over 300 remarkable tales of adventure, sacrifice and triumph. Follow their hopes and dreams. Celebrate their victories. See life through their eyes. Uncover rogues and wretches and their notorious legacies. Sing the songs they took with them and dance to their tune. Be inspired by their creativity, hear their captivating stories, explore new worlds, and meet some unforgettable characters. Journey through 1500 years of Irish history, brought to life like never before, at the world's first fully digital museum, EPIC, the Irish Emigration Museum. So hopefully that will give people a little bit of a sense, Jody, of how people interact with the museum. Because again, that's how, what makes the museum so different. It's not only are we telling the stories of these Irish people and where they went to all over the world, what they went on to achieve. We're also doing it in some, some way of a, of a very, very different way. It's really interactive. Um, as you can see here on the screen, it's fantastic for families. So um, usually kids are, are sometimes dragged to museums and art galleries and different attractions that they may not have an interest in. And obviously when you're on vacation, you know, 
the adults want to see what the adults want to see and the kids want to see what the kids want to see. Epic is a fantastic marriage of the two of those because the adults have the stories. They have the um, little bit of insight into uh, the history of Ireland and its people, whereas the kids then, they uh, are, are able to take the passport, as you mentioned earlier on, and they go through the museum and they stamp their passport, but they're also swiping, touching, and dancing their way through the museum. You'll see on the top left here, this little girl is dancing along to river dance. So it's very interactive. We want people to feel a part of the museum. And it's brilliant for kids as well. And because um, kids can go off uh, into different sections of the galleries and do their own little thing, whether it's drawing or playing dress up or taking pictures or doing different things, whereas the adults can then do a little bit of reading and a little bit of immersive um, interest in, in the stories. And this right. is actually and, the And the, the way it's set up, I loved it. <clears throat> Sorry, that each each area, it, it really is set up in, in separate rooms. So you're leaving one story and you're walking into another. It's yes. it's very defined mm -hmm. when you walk into each section, what you're walking into and what you're going to experience. It's it's really and, and it it follows a path. Yes. Um, so it's yeah, it's just really it's laid out so wonderfully. And and yeah. here's the passport. I love the passport. A great a great example of exactly what you're speaking about there is the passport. Um and, and this almost came about by accident. Um so the museum was designed to be self-guided. So we kind of thought, okay, we have to give people a little bit of a map, a little bit of an idea about how far they are through the museum, what they're going to see, what the subject matter is. So we thought, how will we do that? One of the ways was we have to give them a map will we give them a passport? So we gave them a passport because it's an immigration museum. So then we said, what do you do with a passport? You stamp your passport. So in each of these galleries, you'll see 20 different subjects here. And it's exactly as you say, you move from one subject to another. You move through a different period of Irish history and a different um, uh, area where Irish people have had an influence on the culture. So we have examples here, like we have our music and dance section, we have uh, a pub, uh, built into the museum. Uh, we have our art galleries, we have our storytelling where we look at our writers and our actors and our poets. And then uh, we have our sports galleries and our science and discovery. So it's a fantastic way of, of all aspects, of, of discovering all aspects of Irish culture. And the passport is one of the things that people remember so well, uh, particularly kids when they're stamping their passport as they're making their way through the museum. Uh, it's really made a, a little bit of a mark on people. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the museum is actually currently closed for now. So what we've done is we have developed a virtual tour. Uh, and I don't know if you've had a chance to look at this, Jody, but these scenes will be very familiar to you. Mm -hmm. So we have taken a, our virtual um, uh, virtual reality uh, information and turned it into a virtual tour. So people can go onto our website and I'll give you the link in the next slide. And people can actually go into the museum and they can either just look at it on their mobile device or they can put on a VR headset if they want to. And they can move through the museum and click on different areas and watch um, videos about uh, some of the exhibits, read stories about some of the people featured in the museum. So it's just a different way of people that can't travel at the moment, um, that want to still feel like they're getting a little bit of culture. Um, so that's a fantastic thing that we've done uh, and put together in the last couple of weeks. It just moves through people through these galleries so they get a little bit of a sense of of what they experience and one of the nice wow. things is we're, we're practicing social distancing so there's nobody in the music all to themselves which is great and and you said this works with with or without a vr headset with or without so i i, I use it on my desktop and i also use it on my mobile phone my, my cell phone um and it, you don't have to have a vr device uh, to do it, but okay. you can use either which is really good Incredible. I love this. Yeah, it's, it really is fantastic. It, and this is just a quick kind of a walkthrough to give people a little bit of a sense of, of, um, of you know, how, how people uh, experience the museum. So uh, if people are using a VR headset, um, are, they, are they going to have almost the experience of being there? Are they going to sit on this headset for <laughs> two hours? Or, or is it designed to be shorter? They won't, they won't have every single uh, piece of information in the museum, but it's a fantastic head start. It really is, you know, and they're able to sit down and click on links and click on uh, to watch some videos. Um, so, it, it, you know, they won't have the full, full experience, but it's, it's the next best thing, to be honest. You might have to borrow my brother-in-law's headset. 
Oh no, you, you have. I, I, I'd recommend to try it a couple of different ways. If you if you have access to the the VR headset, to try it that way as well. Um, but it's just as good sitting on the couch and sitting on your sofa and and reading it on your on your Wonderful. sofa. Wonderful. Um, so this is the link if you if people want do want to click on. But all people have to do is just search for Epic Museum and Virtual Tour, and it'll pop right up for them. And I will also put the link in the video notes, so you will be able to click on it that way as well. Great, great. I also just wanted to touch on genealogy because obviously the story um, that we tell in, 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 the, in the museum is about people leaving Ireland and going all over the world. So we tell the stories of 10 million Irish people that have left the island of Ireland. And around the world, there are 70 million people that actually claim Irish heritage. 35 million of those would be in the United States alone. Mm -hmm. So that starts to tell the story and the reasons why there's such an Irish, a strong Irish American community. Um, so at, at, at Epic, we offer a genealogy service. And I'll play this short video that people can enjoy. When our ancestors left Irish shores, they left everything behind except for something that would give them strength, their identity, their power to shape the world. The kind of society we build, the kind of power we generate. What meant everything to them is what they gave you, your name. Epic shares the stories of Irish emigration. This year, we are building a unique exhibition celebrating Irish family names found across the world. Be part of the Power of a Name exhibition and honour your ancestors by bringing your family name home. So that video will just give see people a little bit of a sense of it's all about the name, it's all about their family history. There's a lot of information on this slide as well, which is a, a great way for people, particularly in these times where uh, not a lot of people can travel just yet, uh, but they might want to, to plan their journey to Ireland uh, in, the, in the near future. And genealogy might be a part of that. They might be Irish American. And these are some of the, um, the, some of the pieces of information that our genealogists at Epic and the Irish Family History Centre have given and they, they have um, recommended that people can do a little bit of digging from their own homes in the States before they travel to Ireland and before they sit down with the genealogist and do a personal consultation. Um, so obviously people can pause the video and take a little bit of a look at, at this as well. Um, so it's just things to look up in the US before they come to Ireland. Um, so you know, sometimes we meet people in in, in, um, in the Irish Family History Centre where they have done a huge amount of research for years and years and years and they've just hit a brick wall. So they need to come to Ireland to get to that next step. And sometimes it's people coming that haven't done any, any um, any genealogy research before, they're just starting the journey. So there's a couple of things that will help them here to, to, to kind of really just make the most of that. And um, they'll have maybe have a little bit of an idea about where their family would have come from um, in, in Ireland. Uh, I mentioned the Jeannie Johnson earlier on, so I just wanted to touch on this and give people a little bit of an insight. Because it's so close to where Epic is located, which is right on the River Liffey, and uh, the Jeannie Johnson, it's, an, it's a, a replica famine ship. Um, so from the Great Potato Famine, when Irish people were leaving, uh, Ireland in their millions. Um, uh, the Jeannie Johnson was one of the um, one of the more interesting stories about the, what these so-called coffin ships, uh, and they were named coffin ships because so many people would have died uh, on the journey uh, to the United States and to North America. And the Jeannie Johnson was a little bit different because uh, nobody actually died on this vessel on its numerous trips to North America. So it went to Canada and and to the United States. And the reason for that is that they limited the number of people on board, um, but they also had a doctor on board as well. So the stories that people can experience when they come down uh, and visit the Jeannie Johnson, located right outside Epic, will be absolutely fascinating. So I just wanted to touch on that and give people a little bit of a sense of, you know, the landscape of Dublin's Docklands as well. So we have these beautiful new buildings that are happening and the regeneration of this area uh, in the Docklands area mixed with this old replica boat. So it's it's a kind of a striking uh, a striking figure uh, right on the right on the river. So that's all from me, Jody. Just to give people <laughs> an insight into the stories of Epic. Um, hopefully the virtual tour as well will really, really help people and uh, get, give them a little bit of a, a sense of what uh, of the stories we tell and a little bit of an insight in, into uh, the Irish people. There's so much to see and do at Epic. Like I said, I spent four hours there. When I was there this past January, I, I had the great pleasure of sitting down with Declan Brady, who is one of the genealogists in the Irish History Center. And so for anybody who wants to check that out, I actually have a podcast on it. It will be linked in the notes as well. 
but there's so much information there and they have found a way to get around those roadblocks that so many of us hit when we are looking for that that elusive irish ancestor so the fact that that epic and the irish history center have come together in such a strong partnership is just outstanding for people who are coming to ireland and you know looking to find that that bit of their past and make that connection mm, absolutely absolutely so tell us a little bit about what Dublin looks like today. I've I've seen a few pictures and it's absolutely unbelievable. So yeah, when when you're in your two kilometer in your two kilometer uh, area, what what is it that you're experiencing right now? So I suppose I, I'm really really lucky. I'm look I'm living in Castle Knock in Dublin, which is a beautiful kind of a village area of Dublin, right on the edge of Phoenix Park. So I've got um, this beautiful park within my two kilometre zone. So we're only allowed to leave um, our houses for exercise within two kilometres of our house. So I'm really really lucky that I have Phoenix Park on my doorstep. Um, yes, you are. <laughs> Further afield from that, I'm only going on what I see on, on social media and what I see from friends because people are really, really strictly adhering to this policy. Um, we are all working from home. Uh, we're working on a lot of projects for the museum for when we do reopen. Um, but you see people uh, walking the streets uh, on social media and it's just empty. It's just kind of an eerie sense. I don't know if you've seen the same drone footage that I have of Dublin um, Dublin streets during the daytime and you would see the odd Lewis tram or the odd bus going past. It's it's quite eerie, but it's quite beautiful as well to see Dublin uh, in a little bit of a different sense, you know. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different. I suppose everyone has their own sort of uh, experiences and their own stories about what life is like. Um, I think we're really lucky um, here, here in Ireland. We're really lucky for people are really adhering to um, the recommendations and the advice of the government and, and our, our chief medical officer officer here um, and people are kind of coming around to the idea that we're not stuck at home we're safe at home um, so I think people are really kind of really looking forward to getting out and about and it, it is kind of that people are usually at this time of the year are either traveling uh, or planning their their summer mm -hmm. vacation uh, whereas now people are just kind of have this built up desire to to go somewhere when when we're all back to normal and obviously we don't know when it is, but, the, uh, the new normal that will be that we'll be adhering to well, normal. David, so, yeah, to, exactly. to sign off, can you tell me where people can follow Epic online, um, Instagram, Facebook, uh, obviously the website, are you on all of those, any place else they might yeah, be able to find you? Be, being the world's first fully digital museum, we're across all of these platforms. We have to be. Um, so our, our main website is epicchq.com. So people can find the virtual tour uh, on, the, on the website. Uh, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel has a lot of interesting videos about our immigrants as well. Um, and all of the um, links to those can be found on our website. Um, but I can, I can also send them on to you if you want to share them as well. I will actually put all of those in the show notes as well. So it will be very easy for anyone to dig a little deeper into Epic, see what the museum has to offer and plan to add it to their itinerary when we can travel again. And they, David, they thank you. Out, they can find out, Jody, uh, what Epic stands for as well. Are you gonna give it away or no? I don't know, do you want to? Yeah, go ahead and give it away. Okay, so EPIC, it isn't just a kind of a buzzword. It does stand <laughs> for something. It's E-P-I-C, and it stands for Every Person is Connected. So people, we don't tell people at the very start of the museum. As you know, Jody, we tell them at the very end that every person is connected because it's about the 10 million Irish people that went all over the world and made a connection uh, in some way in their new worlds and in their new communities. But it also uh, links back to the 70 million Irish people that are around the world that have a connection back to Ireland, whether it's through a love of Irish music or Guinness or whiskey, or it's a love of Irish poetry, or it's actually family um, that are in Ireland. So that's what Epic stands for. So we, we'll, uh, we've left the cat out of the bag a little bit on that one, Jody. It, you know, but the thing is, it's something that, especially if as you're getting to the end of the museum, it's easy to miss. Yes, yeah. So. yeah. And, yeah but it's I good know. to know because it, it gives you a perspective that maybe you didn't have um going into it i, I think it, it gives it a different perspective when you maybe go through it a second time with that in the back of your mind 
So. I think so, yeah. I, I, and and it is great. Um, one thing to mention, um, Jody, as well, because you even mentioned it a little earlier on, that four hours maybe wasn't enough for you. Mm-hmm. We... We, we have recently reintroduced um, a, a, a return pass ticket to Epic. So if people are coming to Epic uh, and just getting their normal tickets coming in, they can come back to the museum and show that ticket and, and get free access back into the museum within 10 days. So oh, if they're starting brilliant. their vacation in Dublin um, and they want to come and visit us, if they feel like they haven't had enough time and they're coming, they're maybe doing a tour of Ireland and coming back to Dublin at the very end before flying out, they can come and visit us again for free. To, to kind of finish off or or get a little bit of a, a an extra um an extra time in the museum which is it's um very handy to do also great for if the weather doesn't cooperate with whatever you had planned in the next few days exactly exactly <laughs> Well, David, again, thank you so much for taking a few minutes today giving us a walk through epic and virtual tour I think is brilliant so. I can't wait for people to try that out. And until we can travel again, stay safe. Thanks so much for joining me. That's great. Thank you very much, Jody. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in Dublin soon.